Have you ever wondered what separates successful sales professionals from the rest? It's not magic, it's strategy. Welcome to a deep dive into the world of sales strategies, a vital component of any successful sales professional's toolkit. These strategies are not just for the seasoned veterans. They are the building blocks that beginners can use to lay a solid foundation for their sales careers. Today, we are going to explore 15 strategies that can take you from being a good salesperson to a great one. We'll delve into understanding your product, your customers, and how to handle rejection, among other essential strategies. We will also discuss how to leverage technology, manage your time effectively, and never stop prospecting. Each strategy is a piece of the puzzle that, when put together, creates a complete picture of sales success. Welcome back to Wealth Minds Elite, the place where we redefine success, one elite mind at a time. The first strategy is simple yet powerful. Know your product inside out. It's the cornerstone of successful selling. You see, your clients expect you to be the expert, the go-to person, when they have questions or concerns about your product. So how do you become that person? Start by mastering your product's features and benefits. Understand every nuts and bolts, every single detail about what your product does and how it can make your customer's life better. Use product demos and support documents to deepen your understanding. Become an expert not just in how your product works, but also in how it solves customer problems. The more you know about your product, the better equipped you'll be to answer questions, address concerns, and convince your client that your product is the solution they've been looking for. Remember, your product knowledge is your greatest weapon. And before we dive deeper, hit that subscribe button. It's the only product you'll get today that's absolutely free. Your next key to success is understanding your prospect's pain points. Now, this might seem obvious, but it's surprising how many sales conversations focus on the product rather than the prospect's problems. Here's the deal. The more you understand about the challenges your prospects face, the better equipped you'll be to offer solutions that truly resonate with them. But how do you uncover these pain points? It all starts with asking the right questions. Don't just ask about their needs. Dig deeper. Ask about their struggles, their frustrations, their aspirations. These questions open up a dialogue, allowing your prospects to express their concerns and desires. Once you've identified the key pain points, it's time to tailor your solution. Show your prospects how your product or service directly addresses their specific issues. This isn't about a one-size-fits-all approach, but rather a personalized solution that speaks to their unique situation. By focusing on their problems, you position yourself as the solution. The third strategy involves doing your homework. Know your customer in advance. In the world of sales, knowledge is truly power. The more you know about your prospects, the better equipped you are to present a solution that resonates with them. This is where research becomes your secret weapon. Before you even step foot into a meeting, take the time to understand your prospect's business. What are their goals? Who are the key decision makers? What challenges are they currently facing? Remember, every business is unique with its own set of complexities and nuances. By understanding these, you can tailor your pitch to speak directly to their needs, showing that you're not just trying to sell a product, but provide a solution. This approach does more than just impress your prospects. It shows them that you value their time and are genuinely invested in helping them succeed. Being well prepared doesn't just build trust, it builds confidence. The fourth strategy is a classic one, always follow up. This simple act can mean the difference between a lost opportunity and a successful sale. When you follow up, you're showing the prospect that you're genuinely interested in their needs and that their business matters to you. It's not just about reminding them about your product or service, but it's also about building a relationship. But how do you manage follow-ups efficiently? It's all about having a system. Use digital tools that allow you to schedule and manage your follow-ups. This could as simple as setting reminders on your phone or using a customer relationship management tool. Whatever method you choose, the idea is to be consistent. Don't let potential sales slip away. Make the effort to check in and show them you care. Remember, persistence pays off in sales. So, don't be afraid to follow up. 
because every interaction is an opportunity to close a deal. And while you're following up with your prospects, don't follow up with us by hitting that subscribe button. It's the one deal you won't regret closing today. Our fifth strategy might surprise you. Use rejection as an opportunity. Yes, you heard it right. Rejection can be a tough pill to swallow, but it's also a golden opportunity to learn and improve. When a sale doesn't go through, don't treat it as a setback. Instead, see it as a chance to analyze what went wrong. Was your pitch off? Did you not connect well with the prospect? Use these insights to refine your approach. Remember, rejection is a part of sales. Even the most seasoned salespeople face it. The difference is that successful salespeople don't let rejection discourage them. They use it to build resilience, to sharpen their skills and to perfect their pitch. So, the next time you face rejection, don't let it pull you down. Use it as a springboard to bounce back stronger and better. So next time you're rejected, don't get discouraged, get better. The sixth strategy is all about time. Manage it effectively. Time is your most precious resource, and in the world of sales, it's crucial to wield it wisely. Start by prioritizing your tasks. High-value deals should be at the top of your list, demanding your immediate attention and energy. But how do you keep track of everything you need to do? That's where productivity tools come into play. From scheduling appointments to setting reminders for follow-ups, these digital assistants can help streamline your workflow, ensuring you stay on top of your game. Moreover, always remember to balance your time between nurturing existing relationships and cultivating new ones. It's easy to get caught up in chasing the next big deal, but don't forget the value of maintaining and strengthening your current client base. Remember, time is money in sales, so manage it well and watch your sales soar. The seventh strategy is about embracing the future. Leverage the right technology. In today's fast-paced world, digital tools are no longer optional, they're essential. For instance, customer relationship management systems, or CRMs, are more than just digital address books. They allow you to track interactions, manage contacts, and analyze data, all in one place. This can help you stay on top of your game. Similarly, appointment setters can streamline schedule, helping you focus on what truly matters, building customer relationships. But remember, it's not just about having the tools, it's about knowing how to use them effectively. Stay informed about the latest technology trends, attend webinars, read articles, or join online communities. This continuous learning will help you stay organized and efficient. And finally, don't be intimidated by technology. It's there to make your life easier, not harder. Remember, technology is not your enemy, it's your ally. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's the one technology you don't need to leverage. Just click it. The eighth strategy is about knowing who you're dealing with. Understand your prospect's role. In the complex world of sales, it's crucial to know who holds the keys to the decision-making process. Are you speaking with the final decision-maker or an influencer within the company. Understanding their role will help you tailor your message effectively. Consider this. If you're speaking with an IT manager, your conversation might focus on the technical aspects of your product. However, if you're speaking with a CEO, they might be more interested in how your product can help boost the company's bottom line. It's not just about talking. It's about talking the right language to the right person. What's their day-to-day -day like? What challenges do they face? And most importantly, how can your product or service make their life easier? By understanding and addressing the unique needs of each decision maker, you can position your product as the solution they've been looking for. Remember, the right message for the right person can make all the difference. The ninth strategy is a reminder. Never stop prospecting. Prospecting, the act of seeking out new business opportunities, is the lifeblood of sales. It's like being a gold miner, constantly sifting through the river of potential leads to find those golden nuggets that could turn into valuable customers. Think of it as an ongoing conversation with the market. You're continuously asking, who needs what I'm offering? And who can I help next? This conversation should never end because the market, like a river, keeps flowing and changing. In the digital age, we have a plethora of tools at our disposal to aid in this prospecting process. 
LinkedIn Sales Navigator, for instance, is a boon for sales professionals. It helps you to find the right prospects, understand key insights about them, and engage with them effectively. So keep your ear to the ground, your eyes on the horizon, and your hands on the tools that can help you find those golden opportunities. Remember, a full pipeline is a profitable pipeline. The tenth strategy is about being prepared. Perfect your objection handling. Now this is where the real test of your sales prowess comes into play. In the world of sales, objections are a given, but how you handle them can make all the difference. You need to anticipate potential objections your prospects may have and prepare well thought out responses. This not only saves time during the sales process, but also positions you as an expert in your field. Consider this. Addressing concerns upfront is a powerful way to build trust. It shows your prospect that you understand their concerns and are ready with a solution. It's about demonstrating that the value your product or service offers outweighs any possible objections. Think of objections as hurdles on your racetrack. With the right approach, you can leap over them and cross the finish line to successful sales. Remember, every objection is an opportunity to build trust. The eleventh strategy is about building trust. Use empathy to connect. Yes, sales is about numbers, but it's also about people. And people, my friends, respond to empathy. It's about genuinely caring for your customers, understanding their needs, their fears, their aspirations. It's about placing yourself in their shoes, seeing the world from their perspective. It's about showing them that you're there for them, not just to make a sale, but to solve their problems, to ease their pain, to help them reach their goals. This is how you build trust. This is how you form meaningful connections. And these connections, they go far beyond just making a sale. They transform customers into advocates, into partners, into friends. And when that happens, when you've earned not just their business, but their trust, that's when you've truly succeeded as a salesperson. Remember, people buy from people they trust. The twelfth strategy is about prioritizing. Focus on quality instead of quantity. In the world of sales, it's easy to get caught up in the numbers game, always chasing after more and more leads. But here's a different perspective. Try shifting your focus from quantity to quality. Think about it this way. Would you rather have a hundred potential customers who might make a purchase, or twenty loyal customers who consistently do? Nurturing relationships with your consistent clients will not only ensure steady revenue, but also build stronger, more meaningful connections. And how do you do this? By providing exceptional service, understanding their needs, and always being there when they need assistance. When you do this, you're not just selling a product or service, you're creating a bond. And remember, tools are available to help you streamline tasks and focus on these valuable interactions. So don't spread yourself too thin. Remember, it's not about how many, it's about who. The thirteenth strategy is about being reliable. Stay consistent and have integrity. Consistency and integrity are two of the most significant pillars in the world of sales. Every customer interaction should be a display of your unwavering dedication to providing high quality service. Consistency not only builds your reputation, but also creates a sense of reliability and trust among your clients. Imagine yourself as the customer. Would you trust a salesperson who seems inconsistent or unreliable? Probably not. So make sure your actions and words align. If you promise to follow up, do so. If you commit to a delivery date, stick to it. Having integrity means standing by your word, even when it's not convenient. It's about being honest, even when the truth may not be what the customer wants to hear. It's about admitting when you're wrong and taking steps to make it right. Consistency and integrity can turn a one-time buyer into a lifelong customer. Remember, integrity is the best sales strategy. The fourteenth strategy is all about metrics. Use a repeatable process you can measure. Now you might be wondering, why is this important? Well, my friends, in the world of sales, numbers don't lie. They provide an honest reflection of your performance and can be your guiding star to success. Picture this. You've got a sales process that seems to work. But how do you know it's truly effective? The answer is simple, by measuring it. By utilizing metrics, you can keep a close eye on your sales process. This allows you to make data-driven adjustments. Perhaps you notice that your conversion rates are dipping. 
With metrics, you can pinpoint exactly where in the process things are going awry and take corrective action. Moreover, there are numerous tools available today that help you visualize performance and identify opportunities. So don't shy away from using them to your advantage. Remember, what gets measured gets managed. The final strategy is about leveraging your network. Seek out referrals. Referrals are like gold in the sales world. They are a testament to the positive experiences your customers have had with your products or services. But how do you go about seeking referrals? Well, you don't have to wait for them to fall into your lap. Actively ask your best customers if they know anyone who would benefit from what you offer. You see, satisfied customers are often more than willing to spread the word about a product or service they love. So, don't be shy about tapping into this resource. Use platforms like LinkedIn to identify potential leads through your network. Connect with these individuals and express your interest. The key is to approach with respect, genuine interest, and a clear value proposition. And remember, a good referral is the best compliment. And that's it. 15 strategies to help you excel in sales. We've discussed everything from mastering your product knowledge to understanding your prospects' pain points, and from knowing your customer in advance to always following up. We've explored how to use rejection as an opportunity, how to manage your time effectively, and how to leverage the right technology. We've delved into understanding your prospect's role, never stopping prospecting, perfecting your objection handling, using empathy to connect, focusing on quality instead of quantity, staying consistent and having integrity. We've also touched on using a repeatable process you can measure and seeking out referrals. Each of these strategies is a tool to help you become a more successful sales professional. Remember, selling is not about convincing, it's about helping. So go out there and help your customers solve their problems. Success will follow.